Hello and thanks for joining us. This is The Word Now and let's begin in the U.S. Today is the second anniversary of January the 6th, 2021 insurrection at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. when an angry mob which were supporters of former President Donald Trump sought to block the certification of the results of the 2020 presidential election. A bipartisan group of members of Congress will gather on the east front steps of the Capitol building to honor the officers who lost their lives or were injured as a result of the attack. U.S. President Joe Biden is marking the day at the White House with a ceremony where he will bestow the Presidential Citizens Medal to 12 individuals who, one White House official said, made exemplary contributions to America's democracy surrounding January the 6th, 2021. They include, uh, among the, uh, they include a mother and daughter who were threatened for doing their jobs as election workers in Fulton County, Georgia. Uh, also, a police, uh, also some police officers, lawmakers, and a former federal civil servant. One award will be given posthumously to Brian Sicknick, a Capitol Police officer who lost his life protecting the country's elected officials. He died January the 7th. And joining us to discuss the insurrection two years on is global affairs analyst Ibidolak Boajai. Good to have you join us. Thank you. Good to, have, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Let me ask you, I mean, two years on, um, investigation is still on. We understand that it has now gotten to the table of the deputed team of special counsel to look into the issue. I will get there in, in, in a few minutes, but I just want to ask you um, if America thought that it, it would take two years to even begin to, uh, with all of the things that have happened, if, it, if people thought that by now, um, they would see some persecution. How are Americans reacting to the investigation so far? Well, it's, uh, it was a very, very crazy day a couple of years ago when we all sat in front of our telev television sets and saw uh, the insurrection is marched down on the Capitol. And at the time, you know, it was all about uh, then President Trump trying to find ways to uh, nullify the, the results of the election. Uh, but if you bear in mind that America is uh, deeply divided along partisan lines, and at the time, everybody wanted to see, those on the Democratic side wanted to see uh, this uh, committee, uh, you know, charge the president, you know, for, for inciting that crowd. But it was always going to be a difficult task because they wouldn't have needed all the witnesses to come forward and admit that they did this. So those are the things that led to the timing of the committee just wrapping up everything in December uh, of last year and presenting its reports to the Department of Justice. Many people thought maybe it would be um, a, a fast process, but uh, people in the political arena knows how things work in Washington and these things do take time. And there was a lot of resistance from the Republican side to even present uh, themselves uh, for questioning. So uh, it's no surprise that this thing dragged this long because we, we, we live in a very divided political arena right now in the United States. Mm. And, I, and I guess it's even more surprising for people um, to see that this is even a bipartisan issue in the first place, or this is even a partisan issue in the first place. One would have thought that defending American's democracy would be a bipartisan issue. But let me ask you, we've seen the struggle of the Republican Party to elect a speaker in the last um, in the last few days, it's now entered the eleventh um, round of votes, and and McCarthy has still not been able to secure the votes. Can you draw a parallel um, between what we're seeing now in the Republican Party in the House of Reps and what happened um, it, on January the sixth, twenty twenty one? Well, the, the parallel is simply that there is always going to be a hard right faction. In the, uh, in the Republican Party. And those hardliners were the people that were, you know, incited on January 6, 2021, to march on, um, on, on the Capitol, because these are the uh, MAGA folks that, uh, you know, believe so much in President Trump that they will do anything he bids. And uh, the, the, the parallel now is that these uh, lawmakers, Republican lawmakers in this current Congress, who are obstructing the election of uh, McCarthy as speaker are those who still believe that the elections in 2020 were stolen from Trump. And funny enough, uh, even Trump has been urging them to support uh, McCarthy and get this thing over with, but they are intent on having their demands met. 
and uh, this is a saga that might continue for for some time mm -hmm. so okay. we're going to see maybe the 12 vote happen today and there's still an expectation that we will not resolve it Mm, talk about creating a monster. But l l let's talk about the, the fact that on a day like this, we heard um, so f uh, from um, House of Reps member Matt Gaze, um, who nominated President Trump or former President Trump as a speaker. Um, uh, how, how do you react to that? It's all kind of become gimmicky if you think about it. Yes, they, I believe you are able to nominate someone that's actually not in the a member of the house but i think it, it's kind of become farcical because now they're just throwing names in there just to continue to obstruct uh the election of uh, uh kevin mccarthy they just want him to step down and I, I doubt very much if he will be able to compromise to to their demands so the the the, the talk right now is that there might be some consensus candidates being put forward today if he should lose the 12 vote, which is what is expected. Uh, it's, it's, we, we wait to see who those consensus candidates will be. But uh, this is something that might just drag on for, for, for a bit. And the, the more it drags on, the, the more the Republican Party is going to be losing face uh, because they're basically slowing down the, the job of governance of the United States. Mm. And, and as you look at events unfolding in America today, would you say that the, the threat to Americans' democracy has been largely minimized, or um, does that threat remain? The threat remains. It, it definitely remains. I mean, if you, if you look at the fact that Trump has already thrown his hat back in the ring, he wants to run in 2024, and he still has a, a base, even though uh, the, so, some of the results of the midterm elections indicate that his influence might be waning, and then people are expecting a strong opposition to his, uh, his candidacy from other interested uh, contestants. Uh, but there is always going to be that threat because there are still people in the United States that believe strongly that the elections were stolen from him, uh, that it was rigged in favor of the Democrats, and that has not gone away at all. Mm. And, and if he were to su succeed in running, um, even securing the, the tickets of the Demo um, Republican Party, do you think that that would heighten the threat, or does that help the situation? It's something that we'll have to uh, wait and see. Uh, his base is really, really strongly behind him. That's just the truth. You know, it's a factor in the Republican Party. Uh, we, it remains to be seen if we'll be able to navigate through uh, the field that is expected to emerge once the uh, other candidates start raising their hands and standing, uh, standing up and throwing their hats in the ring. Uh, but if he should make and win the nomination, um, that's where we will really see how deeply divided this country is one more time because then the lines will be drawn clearly and people will have to take sides. My feeling is that Americans, majority of Americans may not have the appetite to have the country go through uh, what we went through on January 6, 2021 uh, and have uh, a divided country. People want unity, uh, but you know it has to be seen if President Biden, even in his speech today, is able to appeal to that sense of unity to bring the country back together. Again, if you, if you go back to uh, the 9 11 attacks, uh, you, you saw, you know, uh, bipartisanship when both Republicans and, and Democrats stood together, sang, uh, you know, God, God, God bless America. You know, all those days are far gone. Now, now we have a sharply divided Congress and uh, with, with someone like President Trump really, really stoking the fire. So if he wins the nomination, we might be back in the same arena again of, of a sharply divided country. Mm. And let me ask you quickly, um, we understand that the Department of Justice has now put together a team of, of special counsel um, to determine whether former President Trump or his allies should face persecution. Um, are you optimistic that at any point President Trump might face, face persecution? That is a very dicey situation because it has implications even for the Biden administration, you know, because people believe that it's a personal vendetta against, uh, or some people rather, against President Trump. So uh, the, the, the Department of Justice also has to weigh uh, what that will mean, even though they're supposed to be in a uh, department business to stand uh, on the Democratic Party. But um, the expectation is that there will be some sort of indictment, something that could potentially stand in the way of Trump running. 
And I think that is what a lot of people are expecting because there, there are several charges that will be brought against him. You know, indictments are likely to happen, criminal indictments. So it, it's expected that they will not come this far and get uh, special prosecutors uh, involved, I mean, special investigators involved and not move forward. But uh, the implications of it is yet is what we all have to wait and see. We are monitoring developments in the U.S. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, Global Affairs Analyst Ibidolak Bajai. Thank you. Thank you for having me.